cost minimization tries to answer the fundamental question of how to select inputs in order to produce a given output at a minimum cost. It's like solving the producer's choice problem in a mirror image way to production maximization. This is the general equation to formulate cost minimization. It is read as the total cost, defined by the cost of the amount of output produced, y, multiplied by its cost of production, p, subject to a total output level, y, which has to be at least as high as the desired output level, y bar. This equation is a generalization, and therefore it is easier to understand this optimization problem when dealing only with two inputs. In this new equation, we see that the firm tries to minimize the total cost function, defined by the sum of its factors of production, capital and labor, each of them multiplied by their prices, R being the interest rate the firm pays for capital, and W the wage it pays for each unit of labor. This total cost is subject to a production level which depends on its factors of production, which has to be at least as big as the output level it seeks. This second formula is commonly used in order to facilitate its graphical representation. The x-axis, or horizontal axis, shows the amount of capital used in the production process, while the y-axis, or vertical axis, shows the amount of labor needed. This is called an isocost line, which represents the budgetary constraint the firm is faced with. It joins different input combinations that have the same cost. In theory, any combination that lies inside or on this isocost line can be chosen. The lines that are set downwards represent lower amounts of spending, where the smallest total cost is given by the shortest line. It is quite obvious that any firm would rather spend less than more, thus choosing the smallest cost possible. However, what we are trying to achieve is to reach a specific amount of output level. Although this desired output level can be fulfilled with different cost functions, we will want to choose the lowest possible one so that it minimizes our cost. As we can see, firms are able to choose different isocost lines. However, there is only one that meets both conditions of desired output level and cost minimization. This optimization solution will be located at the exact point where the isocost line is tangent to the isoquant. Given the properties of the budget constraint and the production function, one and only one solution is possible. The combination of inputs that minimizes cost while complying with the level of output desired will be composed of the equilibrium amount of capital and the equilibrium amount of labor. At this point, the interest rate divided by the unitary wage paid, which corresponds to the slope of the isocost line, will be equal to the marginal rate of technical substitution, which is equal to the slope of the isoquant. This optimization problem must be seen as one of two sides of a coin, called production duality. Indeed, a similar but opposite analysis can be done solving the primal problem, the production maximization problem.